So this question is a diagram question. Any question that provides some visual input, I'm going to call a diagram question. We see our x-axis here is number of half-lives. Our y-axis here is mass remaining in nanograms. The question says the graph models the mass y in nanograms, which we just saw, of cobalt-60 remaining in a sample after x half-lives. So that's our x-axis. The half-life of cobalt-60 is 5.27 years. Okay, so not sure if this is important, but half-life basically means that the amount of time it takes for you to have half of your starting amount. So if I had 10 grams of something and the half-life was 10 years, that means after 10 years, right, 10 years, I should only have 5 grams of that thing. So let's read the actual question here. What is the mass in nanograms of cobalt-60 remaining in the sample after 10.54 years? Well, how do these relate to each other? We were given 5.27 years as the half-life. We're asked for how much cobalt-60 is remaining after 10.54 years. We have a graph here where each of these values represents a half-life. Um, so that's all the tools that we have to answer this question. So 10.54 is two times 5.27, right? So 5.27 times two is equal to 10.54. Now, why is that useful for me? That's useful because if 5.27 years represents one half life, then multiplying it by two represents two half lives, okay? That, so that 10.54 years represents two half lives, which would take me here to the two on the x-axis. Now, that two on the x-axis corresponds with this point here on the graph, which is a bit above one nanogram of cobalt-60 remaining, slightly above one. So that's what our answer should be. So answer choice A says 0 0.47, definitely not correct. Choice B says 1.25, I like that. Choice C says two, that's too much. Choice D says 2.64, that's also too much. So choice B is the best answer here. And again, the relationship was between the 5.27 years for a half-life, recognizing that when you multiply that by 2, that is the 10.54 years. Also recognizing that that 2 represents the 2 here on the graph of the number of half-lives, and then utilizing the graph to figure out how many nanograms remain.